Praise God. The Lord is good. Amen. Welcome to our Friday Night Stay Connected series. My name is Mike Martinez, pastor of the Rock Christian Church in Fontana. And I just wanted to and ask a question of you tonight. The question is this. What is the greatest threat to the church? Today's church, what is the greatest threat coming against them? Uh, there's a, a pastor evangelist uh, named Paul Washer. Uh, he was asked that same question. And the answer that he gave as the greatest threat to today's church was pastors. You might think that that would be a joke or him trying to be funny, but he was very serious. He said, pastors and leaders. He said, pastors and leaders that are weak and that don't stand upon the word of God or teach the word of God, create and breed weak churches and weak Christians. He said, pastors and leaders that are not praying and standing in the gap for their church and causing the church to desire to follow their example of prayer, serve God in a church that lacks prayer. Uh, I can agree 100% with both these things that he said, but I believe there's a couple of others that really stand out in my heart, and I wanted to share those with you tonight. Um, the first one being the lack of urgency or intensity to learn and know the Word of God. People are looking at the Word of God these days as something that was for the past, something that others studied and that it's not important to be reading your Bible every day or to be gaining understanding and knowledge of God's Word, that we know enough. We know Jesus, we know the apostles, and we think that we're fine in the condition we're in. That, that can be so dangerous as a church. The second, which ties together with it, is those who see little importance in gathering together and being in the house of God. They, they think it's something that's optional and uh, they can serve God just as well away from church as they can in church. They can be used just as much by God away from the house of God, not being around God's people, as they can being in the house of God or being with God's people. And this is an error. This is a threat that comes against the principle of the church, of why the church was put in place. Um, in Acts chapter 8, there's a, a scripture speaking of the Ethiopian who was reading the book of Isaiah. And as he read this book of Isaiah, the Word of God says that Philip was prompted by the Holy Spirit to run to him, to run to him and ask him, do you know what you're reading? Do you understand what you're reading? And his response was in Acts chapter 8, verse 31. He said, how can I unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. And Philip came and read and gave him understanding of what the scripture said and how it pointed to Jesus Christ. We need that guidance of the Holy Spirit to gain and learn understanding. This is truly an important part of serving God. And this happens on a daily basis. We, we must be in the word, but when we gather together, we gather together to receive the word, to gain understanding of the word. We enjoy worshiping God together, and that's a, a special privilege. We enjoy the fellowship of being around one another. But we need to understand that we're there to get fed the Word of God. Well, we might think, well, I do go on Sunday mornings. That's sufficient. But Wednesday night is actually called Bible study because we're going through specific books to gain understanding of what that book is teaching. This is grassroots verse by verse teaching this is what will strengthen us and aid us in our walk but we look at it as something that is so minor and little in detail but can be such a benefit to us 
it's simple to say, yes, we need to read our Bibles more. Yes, we need to be in the house of God more. And these are easy things to agree with. But ask yourself, how easy is it for you or I to miss church, to be away from the house of God? See, these are where the rubber meets the road. And the scripture I want to share with you tonight is in Hebrews. It's in Hebrews chapter 10. In Hebrews chapter 10, we get instruction for the church. This instruction starts in verse 23. Hebrews 10, 23 says, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Praise God. Hold on to your hope without wavering, because God is faithful. It says in verse 24, And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. We must consider one another. Think about one another in order to stir up love and good works. How can we think about one another, stir up good works in the midst of one another, if we're not even together? We must be together to do that. We must be a part of the same uh, work, not just long distance. Yeah, that can do when we have no other alternative. But if we have the ability to be together and encourage one another, that's what the Word of God is telling us to do. To encourage one another. Consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. You know how much it blesses each and every one of us as we see each other in person on Sunday mornings, on Wednesday nights, and Lord willing, soon on Sunday nights again? These are times that it shows our love, not just for the Lord and our hunger for his word, but our, our love for one another, to stir up good works in one another. It says in verse 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. That means whenever we gather as a church, being there, being a part of it, being hungry to be together, being blessed to be around one another. This is a blessing that God's given us. But if we're focused too much inward on what we desire and what may be at, 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 the, at that particular point, an inconvenience, well, I'm tired. I had a long day. People don't understand how hard I work. See, we all have the same struggles, but that doesn't excuse the fact that God has called us to love one another, to be there to consider one another in love, to stir up good works and not to miss assembling together. He's called us to be together, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another. Exhorting is lifting up with godly example, with encouragement in the love of God to direct one another in love to stand by one another. That's how we exhort one another. See, we are guided by those around about us. As they follow Christ, they strengthen us. We need each other. The people of God need each other. This was given to us as a blessed gift, and that's why we are the church, not the building, the people. And we need each other. It says, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. As we see the day approaching, the day of his return, the day where he calls us to meet him in the clouds, that day that we wait so hungrily for and so anxiously for. Jesus is coming back. We look around us and we see the days showing that he's coming soon. By everything we see, how much more should we be pressing in? Be used by God in your brothers and sisters' lives. Be the example to your loved ones. Stand strong in the things of God. Be used. Lift each other up. We need each other, God's people. I love you all and I appreciate you all greatly. Continue to stand strong in the things of God. We thank you for being with us tonight. And we ask that God would just continue to strengthen you. And we're going to close in prayer. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, I just pray, Lord, that your word would go forth by your Holy Spirit 
to encourage and strengthen your people, Lord. Father, you're not shaking your finger at us in anger. Father, you are giving us a recommendation in love for what will strengthen us and encourage our hearts by being together. Bless your people in a mighty way. We thank you and we put these things in your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Love one another in, in being together. And always remember, God is still on the throne. God bless you guys, people.